not only do you have a business model, but you're profitable. Like, I'm, I'm making a bunch of tokens right now. It's great. I love it. I mean, I've been, I've been with GeoNet for years now, and I couldn't be happier. What differentiates you from everybody else? Maybe what's most unique about GeoNet is that, that there, was, there was a very good timing with respect to the need for high-precision data, and at the same time, the ability to actually put base stations in at a reasonable cost. Because just a few years ago, an RTK base station was, a, besides all the capex to put the station in at a location, it was a twenty-five to fifty thousand dollar piece of hardware too. So, um, due to advances in semiconductor technology, um, the, you know the, the silicon cost for what we d have do has come way down, and then the, the Web three aspect and the blockchains like Polygon and Solana being there to actually be able to do the low cost transactions need to make deep and so all the things kind of came together at the same time to to allow GeoNet to flourish and then you have all the use cases around uh, traditional use cases like mapping and survey but new use cases like drones and robots that are really picking up the need for high accuracy geospatial data so a lot, a lot of I think a lot of things in life come down to timing and I think um, we've been fortunate enough to get a lot of the timing right um, with our with our product stack that's awesome to hear um, the, the business model like that's so true Chris like a lot of times there is none <laughs> that's where it starts right like it's oh I have this really cool idea well how do you make money well I don't know but I like my idea so we're gonna build it it's like oh, that doesn't work <laughs> Go ahead, I, was, I was gonna say that really like the best application of the deepen model is that it should be an accelerator for a business that would maybe have other challenges but it should work independently of just the deepen component and so that's really the thing that can accelerate change so much more but like you mentioned these $35,000 devices that would have been maybe would have been before you were able to do it the way you're doing it like those kinds of problems can be solved with this new thing that we've been calling deep in but it should have the model should have still worked if that wasn't if that is taken away from it right Absolutely, yeah. I mean, it could have been way more expensive as well, but like, does the model itself, does that work? But you ever had something? Yeah, I was going to say, I just agree. And I think, but the capital efficiency is very important. The velocity is very important. And the shared ownership pulls people in, uh, it lets you get to places that are very hard for Web2. So I think in this world of physical AI, Deepin has a tremendous competitive advantage. And I think if you think about where the big Web2 companies are good at, they are going to have you know big structural advantages potentially in a lot of traditional applications, but physical AI applications, you can't do that in a centralized way. I mean, you've got to take uh, the equipment out into the field. You've got to be all over the world. These are things that are very difficult for uh, traditional Web2 companies to do. For um, they just are not good at orchestrating that type of thing and. Uh, the, the, that's you know you could you can look at that purely as a cost advantage, but it's in a way more than just a cost advantage because they're inherently just not good at it. They're not inherently good at building decentralized infrastructure down to the house level all across the globe in a in a way where each individual end node might be something that's a couple thousand dollars. Ver, Verizon or any of these traditional big Web two companies that they're just not set up to do that. They don't have operating systems to do that. Um, and so Web3 Web and Deepin have a fundamental advantage, and then they become fundamental enablers for physical AI, which is going to be just an absolutely mother of all markets because um, it touches on things like automotive and transportation and logistics and um, aviation, all these things that, that are just being transformed by robotics. This is going to be absolutely mother of all markets, and Deepin is going to be right at the center of it. So it's quite a huge opportunity. we got time for one more question, I think. Anybody out there? I was just wondering, what is typically the, the format uh, people get paid out for on GeoNet, running a, a mining rig? Uh, you, you get paid out in the GOD token. Um, so currently, I think the max mining rate, if, you, if you're in an empty hex and you're the first in, you set up a perfect station, you're earning 24 GOD a day. Um, and then if multiple miners in, enter into that hex that they split. But if you've been the first miner in and you have established your station as having a very high reliability, you earn an NFT, which protects your earnings. And then subsequent people split. So there's a sort of first mover advantage to get into a hex to sort of expand our coverage footprint. 
um, and that NFT stays with you in that hex for the lifetime, so you, then you're sort of protected for your earnings for being the first guy or gal to establish coverage in an area, or high quality coverage. So we're trying to you know, focus on expanding, building the network out in a structured way um, that delivers very high quality coverage. And then, yeah, you get our native token GOD um, and, and can go from there. It's, it's TGE, so it's, 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 it's liquid. Thank you, guys. This is a great conversation. That's what we need in this space. Geonet. Mind the sky.